In today's episode of the podcast, I'll be sharing with you the progress I've made on my hollow shawl by Melody Hoffman, as well as my little black tea you may remember from several episodes ago. And I want to share with you the new direction I may be taking with that particular project. I also want to share with you a knitting project I've been wanting to cast on for a while that I actually have all the yarn for. And I figured I'd get your take on whether or not that should be one of my next cast ons and see what you guys think. So if that sounds like just your cup of tea, grab something cozy, get comfortable, and let's dive in. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor, and I will be your host. I am coming to you today from a very wet and rainy Southern Nevada. I live in Henderson, Nevada, which is a town outside of Las Vegas, Nevada, here in the Southwest United States. And if you've been paying attention to the weather in this part of the world, there is a um, hurricane off the coast of Mexico and Southern California that is kind of downgrading into a tropical storm. And all of the remnants from that particular hurricane tropical storm are going to be <laughs> coming in and hitting Southern California, Arizona, and Southern Nevada pretty intensely with lots of flooding and moisture and wind and all sorts of things. It seems like everybody's kind of bracing for something big here, and it's really hard to know exactly what's going to come from this as it's rather unprecedented. Um, but honestly, like it's kind of nice where we are right now. We love getting any kind of rain. We don't see anything extreme. It's been kind of pleasant, but everybody's just kind of bracing themselves and making sure that this doesn't become, you know, a catastrophic weather event, which will be interesting to keep posted on that to see where it goes. But right now my windows are open in my office. The air outside is so nice and cool and fresh. You may hear as the podcast goes, you may start to hear uh, raindrops outside. I wanna keep the windows open and kind of circulate some fresh air in here. I like to do that whenever we get the opportunity and I just can't resist. So if you do hear some ambient outdoor noises, which may or may not include, you know, a meow or some birds or whatever, um, that's that's where it's coming from. We got the windows open today, guys. We're letting that fresh air come in and it just, it feels great. All right, before we dive in to my projects, I wanna remind you that you can head over to woolneedleshands.com. You can shop the merch over there to help support the channel. There's some really fun merch that helps kind of spread the word and show your support and love for the Wool Needles Hands channel, including some really cute coffee mugs, like the Hello, Hello, Hello mug. There's lots of fun t-shirts over there, some real niche t-shirts. So if you've been watching the podcast, you might get some of the references, but lots of fun stuff over there. I do have a few patterns for sale over there as well. And you can sign up for the newsletter so you can get the monthly recap that I send out at the beginning or end of each month, depending on when it comes. But I would love for you to head over there and check all of that out to help show some additional support for the Wool Needles Hands YouTube channel. Okay, the first project I wanna share with you guys today is my Hollow Shawl by Melody Hoffman. Now, um, several of you asked about where I'm at with this because it is something that I casted on a little while ago and I started making pretty good progress and then I kind of put it off to the side various different things. I don't even know, but here it is. It has been getting love. I have been working on this little by little since I casted it on. And so I figured I would bring it out to share with you. I have not been a very prolific knitter. I don't know if that's something that you refer, like how you refer to knitters that just get a lot done, but um, I've been knitting little bits here and there. I'm working it into my schedule where I can. What? even stuck to my mouth working you know working out some progress where I can I've been working on some socks lately but this has been getting some love and I'll tell you about shawls and I'm not an avid shawl knitter this is the second shawl I've ever knit I, there's something still what even is it I don't know We're, we move on okay they get longer and longer you start out and you're making all this like great progress holy Moses and then as you go, it just gets longer and longer and you feel like everything just really slows down. Like it's a huge speed bump. So here is my hollow shawl so far. I'm just going to kind of hold it up. Now it's all bunched up on my needles here, um, obviously, because you can't fit it all. But you can see that it gets, it's pretty deep. And as it's grown deeper, it's grown, you know, the wingspan has really grown longer. And so all of my rows that I'm knitting just keep getting longer and longer. And it's kind of tedious. Oh, well. I don't know if tedious is the right word because I do it. I enjoy working on it. It's not boring, but it just, you know, it takes more time. And so this one is just taking time. I'm not 
a fast knitter when it comes to fingering weight yarn, regardless of the needle size. In fact, I almost think that knitting with fingering weight yarn on a size six needle, which is what's happening here, is slower to me. I feel like I kind of have to pay more attention and be a little bit more careful. And so it just kind of feels like it takes me a little bit more time to knit with this weight of yarn in, you know, paired with this size needle. When I knit socks, um, you know, it's, it's kind of strange. I don't really know. I wonder because when you knit socks, you're knitting fingering weight yarn with really small needles. And then that's obviously a, a small project. It's going to feel like it goes by faster. This just feels like it takes some time for me, but I'm very happy with the progress I've made. And I am so happy with this beautiful shawl, such a lovely pattern, such a pretty design. I love all the texture in there and that like those undulating short rows that create that really pretty like wave effect with those eyelets. I really love this. I don't know where I was last time I shared this with you, but I have a feeling I had just finished this more recent eyelet section here. And now I'm making my way through. I have, um, I don't know. I want to say I have 25 more rows to go before I'm ready to bind off and the bind off will be a Pico bind off. And I'm going back and forth on whether I want to bind off sooner than that because it is becoming quite large and the bigger it gets, the less likely I am to wear it. The, the less often I will wear it because I just don't have reason to wear really big shawls. And when, um, when I saw this on Melody Hoffman, in the pat well no th there's one photo where it's really bunched up around her neck which would suggest the size of the shawl but i guess i was imagining it being something a little bit more lightweight and easy to wear in the moderate you know winters and stuff that we have so i don't know i may end up binding off early just to limit how big and voluminous it is but then i'm worried that i'm only i'm trying to justify doing that because i'm ready to be done with this i don't know <laughs> i don't want to cut corners you know like i don't want to like stop do working on it but you know I want it to be functional too because like as I put it up against my neck right now I mean this is already like a lot of fabric that's to me like a more shawl even just what I have right here than I ever wear so I don't know you can let me know your thoughts on that I don't want it to be a monster of a shawl and I think honestly if I were to bind off now before I do the next eyelet section I think it would be beautiful that Oscar's outside. I don't know if you just heard that, but Oscar's outside meowing at me. Oscar, are you going to come in? You can come in through the window. I don't know. We may see Oscar. So that's my hollow shawl by Melody Hoffman. I am knitting this using fiber for the people yarn, which is my own hand dyed yarn business. And this is it right here. This is a cotton merino blend. It's a fingering weight cotton merino blend in a really gorgeous kind of right there in a really gorgeous grayish teal color. It's beautiful. I had this in a shop update a couple of months ago and I called this water. Um, it was inspired by a photo. It's just really lovely. Love this. I feel like it's such a nice and kind of unconventional neutral, really. It, it kind of goes with everything and it looks really nice. I imagine this would look really good on all skin tones, all like co complexions and colors and things like that. It's just a really kind of good, I don't know, it's a good color. I don't know. I like it. But that is my hollow shawl. It is living for right now in my Magner project bag. I love this sucker. This is the, um, I have two Magner. No, I have three Magner project bags. This is the medium size. They have this medium size and then they have a really giant size that you could put like a blanket in. And then they have a little size for like a sock project. I absolutely love them. And that's mine. So that is where I'm keeping my hollow shawl. Now, I want to share with you my little black cotton t-shirt number that I started, I want to say like four months ago now. Oh, maybe longer than that. Um, this is a project I started with the intention. It's all improvised. I'm pulling bits and pieces of um, measurements that I've taken from other projects that I've done and putting those together into what is essentially a top down improvised. What I was thinking was going to be a t-shirt. However, as I've picked it back up again and started working on it, I'm starting to think I don't want it to be a t-shirt. Um, I think I want to go a different direction with it. So now this is black. It's going to be hard to make out all the individual stitches. I might pull Gladys over here and um, have her try it on so we can kind of see more of what it is. This 
yarn that I'm using here is by About Strings. This is a yarn company. It's got like the little leather flakes on it from the inside of the project bag. This is a yarn company based out of Canada. And the yarn, I believe, you can get it on Amazon. They are based out of Canada. And I think that's all I know about it. But this is the yarn that I'm using. You can find it um, on Amazon. And it's really pretty. It's a cotton merino yarn. And it's just a really nice yarn. This is a DK weight. The little balls are... Let me see. Lazy DK, 55% extra fine merino wool, 45% cotton. It is 50 grams, 109 yards. It says it's made in China, which... Everything is made in China these days. You know, it's funny. Somebody asked me, I received an email about where yarn comes from, where yarn is sourced. And I'm kind of going off on a sidebar here, but this is interesting because this yarn is sourced, uh, produced, I don't know, I just manufactured in China, I'm assuming, and then sold out of Canada. The question was, what percentage of yarn that you purchase here in the United States is processed or sourced from China or from Chinese sheep in China and, and all of that. And I understand that there's a concern and some folks are concerned about how much we're bringing in from China and all of that. And so it's a good question. You, you want to ask these questions and have these questions um, answered for you as much as possible if you're a consumer of something. And so to answer that question, and if anybody else has this question, and I'm going to put this in the context of independent yarn businesses, not major companies, uh, for example, Burnett or Lion Brand or something like that. I can't speak for those companies. And honestly, I can't guarantee uh, with certainty speak for these other companies as well, these independent companies. But what I can say in terms of my business and what I think is the case for most independent and small yarn companies in the United States, especially ones who, um, you know, talk about their yarn being American wool and all of that, you can be sure that that's coming from sheep here in the United States and it's milled here in the United States. But for most independent hand, uh, yarn dyers, hand dyers, small yarn businesses here in the US, their sheep are, their fleeces are sourced from sheep in either Australia, New Zealand, the UK or South America. I have yet to hear of any instance where fleece is sourced from China for these small independent yarn businesses. I know for certain the yarn that I provide is either coming from New Zealand, the UK, or South America. And most of that is coming from South America. And so none of that comes from uh, China. None of it is manufactured in China or processed in China. And I think that's the same for most independent yarn companies within the United States. And if it isn't that way, um, most often it will say. So Lion Brand Yarn is produced at least it's milled, as far as I know, because on the label it says made in China. And then there's a good proportion of Lion Brand yarn that is not made in China and that is made in Turkey or processed in Turkey, which a lot of these mainstream yarn companies are processed and manufactured in Turkey, which is kind of interesting. And you can dive down that rabbit hole, do a Google search. Um, but in terms of independent yarn companies, hand dyers, things like that, most of that is not processed and most of all of that is processed in places like the United States, the UK, South America, Australia, and New Zealand. So anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. It was an interesting question. And I think it's a good question to ask. We all want to know where our stuff comes from. And I think that it's wise to be, you know, an informed consumer. I, I mentioned that a lot. So I don't know, sidebar. Wow. Yeah, this yarn uh, comes from China. You can get it on Amazon. That's something to consider to know as a consumer moving forward. I'll link to it down below if you're interested. It is quality yarn. It is a great yarn. Um, I really love it. And I have no qualms about purchasing it, knowing where it comes from. But, you know, it is important to you know, pay attention to that kind of stuff. And, and that kind of stuff is important to people. Okay. So anyway, here is the t-shirt t-shirt that I was knitting. And I was thinking it was going to be just a black cotton knit t-shirt. But as I'm working on it, and I know I haven't made a ton of progress on this, it doesn't look much different. But as I'm working on it, I'm starting to think that I want it to be long sleeved because I love the fabric, I love the weight, and I feel it would make a really pretty, <laughs> you're not seeing any of this, I feel like it would make a really pretty long sleeve like knit sweatshirt, if you will. 
And I think that that's the direction I'm going to go with this. Instead of making it a t-shirt or a, a short sleeved sweater, I'm going to make it a long sleeved sweater sweatshirt. Um, I'll pop some pictures up so you can see the details on the neckline and down the raglan. I don't know if it'll even come through if I put it up here in front. Um, it's just so hard to see because it's black. But that is where I'm thinking I'm going with this. I've been taking this one to hockey practice the last several practices because it's just basic stockinette stitch. There's no shaping happening. So I have been kind of giving this more love lately. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm really loving the feel. I'm loving the drape. And I just think I want it to be a regular sweater. I want it to be long sleeved and something I can throw on when it gets cold outside. Because it's got so much cotton in there, it's not going to be super insulating, which is actually kind of not a bad thing. I like having sweaters um, that cover my arms and give me that cozy feeling, but I don't always require something to be quite so insulating as an all wool sweater. And this is gonna be just the ticket for that. So I will, I'll pop some pictures up. You're gonna see the details around the neckline here that there's, you know, some sh like texture going on here. It is like impossible to see it. It seems like it's so dark, but that way you can kind of see what I'm working with here. But yeah, so this has been something I've been working on. I've been giving it some love and really enjoying it. I, okay, another thing too is folks were asking and I even said that I was considering writing a pattern for this. And you know, I, I don't know if I wanna do that. I, um, I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if that's why I'm doing this. Like I'm improvising this because it's something I want. It's, it kind of is filling, um, I wouldn't say a void, but it, it's satisfying a design style that I would like to have in my wardrobe. Um, there's a little fly. And I don't know if making a pattern and trying to get it, you know, tech edited and all of these sorts of things is something I'm really interested in doing. And I know that some of you are going to be disappointed by that. And I, I don't think I've led anybody on to believe that that's a certainty and that's definitely going to happen. At least I hope not. But I'm not a knitwear designer, folks. I'll every once in a while, if there's something small, like a hat or a pair of socks or some mittens or something that I think are really cool and that I can be certain that I can handle writing the pattern and checking it and at, you know, testing it and whatever, and putting it out into the world, knowing that it's put together properly. Um, I'll do that maybe occasionally, but I don't think I'm going to be writing a pattern for this. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> I don't think you should feel compelled anytime you, you know, design something or improvise something that you have to turn it into a pattern that you sell. I mean, unless of course that's your goal, um, which it's not my goal. Uh, so yeah, so I will let you know if that ever changes. But in the meantime, that's not going to be a written pattern. It's just going to be a sweater that I improvise. And, and if anything, I hope that you can take from that experience of my own and have it inspire you to do the same thing. I think coming up with or developing that skill to improvise your knitwear, I think is fantastic. It's liberating and it makes you feel... I don't know, just like you can do more with your skill. You can do more with that craft and you can make things that you don't see represented in the patterns that are available, you know, whether it's the size or the shape or the design or whatever. I think it's really important to kind of develop that skill. And that's what I'm doing here. So if I can put anything out, you know, into the world in terms of this design and have it not be the actual pattern itself, it would be kind of inspiring that same, I don't know, that same motivation in y'all if you're interested in improvising. I think it's a great thing to to do. It's a great journey to embark on. And I am keeping this in my La Rouge bag by Jezebel B. This is a gorgeous leather knitting tote and it is absolutely magnificent, you guys. It's genuine leather. Mm, it smells fantastic. It's just beautiful. Little snaps. It's an arm bag so you can kind of carry it on your arm like this and you have your knitting in there. You can knit right out of the bag. I love it. I take it to hockey practice. I get lots of eyeballs whenever I take it. People like it. Um, it's very, it's glam. So yeah, I love that. Both of those project bags, I'll link down below in the description box if you are interested. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, I have had this, like I've been working on the same projects for quite some time. I haven't casted on anything new outside of a pair of socks. Um, in a while and that's because I finished a pair of socks so I cast it onto another pair but I've been working on the same larger projects for quite some time and I've been getting itchy fingers to cast on something new and not something um, 
new to me, uh, just something that I haven't cast on before, if that makes any sense. And I've had this yarn sitting in my stash for a while. This is Assayer Eco Soft. It is an alpaca cotton yarn and it is absolutely scrumptious. I purchased this last year with the intention of knitting an eclair sweater. Now the eclair sweater, I can't exactly remember who that sweater um, is by. Let me look up the eclair because I'm forgetting the name of the designer. Okay, so the eclair sweater is by Karen Fernandez. That sounds familiar. Um, and it's a gorgeous sweater. It's got this really deep kind of like slit in the side that I think is so interesting and kind of unique, but I just love the really relaxed shape of this. And honestly, too, that slit in the side isn't even the thing that's drawing me to this the most. It's just kind of the overall shape of the sweater, a really easy wearing um, shape with kind of bracelet length sleeves that almost have a little bit of a balloon shape to them. I feel like I could knit this and just not do that slit up the side and make it just a regular body. But I don't know. I guess I think that the slit up the side and then that kind of high low asymmetrical, not even asymmetrical, but like a high low hem that's happening there is just really nice looking. She's wearing it in some of these photos with probably just a t-shirt underneath it and then over jeans. And I just think that looks so nice. So when I first discovered this, I had discovered it by watching an episode of Back to Blighty and she had finished it and it looked beautiful. It just looks so cozy and I've been wanting to knit it ever since then. Oh, see, looking at it now, I'm just, I don't know, I love it. So the yarn that I have here, Isayer EcoSoft, is the yarn that's called for in the pattern and I have it in this really soft gray color. It gives me that like heathered sweatshirt vibe. And I'm thinking that this, the shape of that sweater with this color of yarn would just be a really cozy, wear it with anything sweater. You can throw it over a t-shirt, you can throw it over a, you know, a button down, you could wear a tank top under it and just wear it with jeans. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm really itching to cast on something else. And I feel kind of guilty about that because I have no business doing that because it's only going to take time away from the other projects I need to finish. I know we've all been here before. And then all of those of you that are, you know, what we, what do we call them? monogamous knitters or whatever that have that resolve to work on one project until it's finished. I, you know, I wish, okay. I don't have that skill. Um, I do have that skill and I can, if I, you know, if I'm really motivated by something, it's the only thing that I work on. And I don't think that I'm not motivated by this. I don't know. I don't know, I'm just itching to cast on something new. And I don't know, I know that that's not the greatest thing. And I, and I want you to understand <laughs> that you should never feel compelled to cast something on unless like you're really inspired to do it. Like don't ever do it because you think you need to have new things on your needles all the time because you don't. And I don't think that's why I'm doing this. In fact, I know it's not. I think what it is is that I just like having a sweater on the needles that is cozy and the yarn is a little on the heavier side, like a worsted weight, nothing, you know, this is air and weight, something like that, that you really see progress happening fast. I think what's going on with this black shirt, and somebody mentioned this in the comments of one of the videos where I was first sharing this, because it's black, you kind of lose the work. You know, as you're working on it, it's just this black mass, right? You no longer are captivated by the work itself because when you look down at your hands and the fabric that you're working on is just black. And you know in your mind it's going to be really lovely when it's finished, but up until the point that it's finished, it's just kind of like, I don't know, tedious because all it is is just this black mass of fabric that you're creating. And I feel like for me, the product I'm going to have when I'm all finished is motivating, but the process and the, the tactile nature of it, not only the tactile nature of it, the visual aspect of it and being able to look at it develop in your hands and seeing it and all of this yada, 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 romantic stuff that really inspires me to work on something. And if you remember my Franken sweater from several months ago, that was like that. I just loved watching that fabric grow and how nice and soft and buttery it was and the little neps from the tweeds in there. It was just so, I don't know, really enjoyable, not only to work on because I knew what I was going to have, but just to feel and to see and all of that. 
And so I know that this is not a super bright, colorful color, but I can see it. I can see the variegation of the grays in there, that kind of heathered effect, the really nice fuzzy texture of the yarn. The yarn itself has kind of a chain knit construction. There's just a visual interest here that I feel like I'm kind of lacking with that you know, black t-shirt sweater project. And then as it relates to this um, shawl, I don't think that that's either here nor there because I am working on that and I'm enjoying that. It's just, you know, it just keeps growing and getting bigger. Um, but when it comes to the garment that I'm working on, which I like to have a garment that I can really see come together, that's what it is. I feel like I'm just kind of lost in this big black mass of fabric and I really want to finish it because I really want it when it's finished. I'm just finding that it's, I don't know. I feel like I'm in the doldrums with it visually, you know, like I, I need something more visually stimulating when I'm working or at least something, I don't know, like on the side, I need a side piece that's visually stimulating that I can work on. Maybe that'll be it. I don't know. We shall see. Let me know what you're thinking. Are you in a similar situation right now? Because it's not even just the eclair. Like, hold on. I also have this yarn and I got this yarn shortly before I got that yarn. And the intention, this yarn is for a Terrazzo sweater by Petite Knit. So these are the yarns I have for that. This is by Noro. This is the Omitama, no, no, no. Oh yeah. It's Silk Garden Sock Solo in the Omitama colorway, which is the color that she uses in her Terrazzo sweater. And then this is a Fiber for the People yarn um, mohair that I dyed in this really lovely kind of gray eucalyptus color. And so I have this too. And that terrazzo sweater, again, like how fun to watch this evolve into a fabric, even if it's paired with a mohair like this, like how visually delightful that would be. And that's a really beautiful sweater too. It's got, it's, you know, it's a little bit of a thicker, um, heavier weight. So you're going to see more progress more quickly. That particular sweater is a sweater design I actually don't have in my wardrobe right now. This um, eclair, the same, like with that real dramatic side opening that happens there in the shape of the sleeve, that would fill, you know, a gap in my sweater wardrobe. And then and then another thing I was thinking too is that I need to knit myself a cardigan. I have so many cardigans in my wardrobe that are store-bought that I love. Um, so I don't have a gap in my wardrobe. There's a helicopter flying by. We've been having like, um, military helicopters flying by because our governor has, um, our governor is sending like National Guard and all these things. So there's like these big helicopters that fly by every once in a while. Anyway, so I don't know. I'm thinking like maybe I need to knit myself a cardigan. And it's really dangerous right now because Target has all these really cute cardigans for fall and I don't want to buy any more cardigans. I want to, you know, bite the bullet and knit myself a cardigan. And so I don't know. So maybe that's what I should be doing. Maybe I should be reconsidering what I do with this yarn because wouldn't that be a beautiful cardigan? You guys, let me know your thoughts. I'm in this place. I don't feel like it's something I really need to like work out right now, but it's just, it's, I don't know. I just want something. I'm itchy. I got, I got itchy fingers to cast on something more visually stimulating. A cardigan sounds like a lovely idea. I almost feel like I would love to use that Karen Templer, how to improvise a top-down sweater um, blog series, which if you've never read that, I highly recommend that you do to improvise a top-down cardigan. And then I don't know. Oh, the more I'm thinking about it. Okay. I don't know. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know your thoughts. Drop it down in the comment section. Are you having a similar, are you in a similar place right now with similar quandary? Um, whatever this, isn't it, isn't it just the way? Yeah. Let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear them in the meantime. Thank you so much for taking your time to share some of that time with me. It has been lovely to share these projects with you and to just kind of allow myself to have a stream of consciousness moment to share my thoughts about what I would like to cast on, what kinds of things I want to work on right now, and to really work through what it is about that black sweater that is just not ticking all the boxes for me in terms of my enjoyment in the process. It's going to be a gorgeous sweater. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, I love this. I love having the opportunity to chat with you guys. If you took value from this video or enjoyed yourself at all, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. It truly helps. Definitely subscribe and click that bell icon so that you can be notified anytime I upload new content here on the channel. And also don't forget to head over to woolneedleshands.com and see what we have going on over there. You can pick up something in the merch shop to help show your support for your favorite knitting channel here on YouTube. And if you do happen to purchase merch, 
merch from the Wool Needles Hands merch shop, take a picture and send it to me. I would love to show those pictures here at the end of the podcast in a little roll of photos and a gallery walk of folks that are helping show their love and support for the Wool Needles Hands channel. It would mean a lot to me. So definitely take that opportunity if you happen to have some fun merch from the Wool Needles Hands merch shop. Until I see you guys again for Wednesday's midweek ramble, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.